Welcome to the Model Health Show. This is fitness and nutrition expert Sean Stevenson, and I'm so grateful for you tuning in with me today. On this episode, we're going to be talking about something that adds to your character, expands your worldview, and as you'll see today, has some surprising health benefits. I'm talking about travel. I am talking about traveling. And also, this can be a sketchy situation sometimes. We're going to be covering the top 10 healthy travel tips and some of the things that I've picked up over the years because I put in some sky miles. All right. And this is definitely something that's had a huge impact on my life and something that for all of us, you know, that we need to look forward to and do more often as you're going to learn today why. And also understand that it can come with some complications sometimes. So there's some crazy benefits you're gonna learn about, but also we need to learn how to navigate our travel and get the most of it and be able to bring back good health through the process and really be able to enjoy ourselves. And so for me, my travel experience was very, very limited until the age of 25 was the very first time that I even got onto an airplane. I was very isolated in my environment outside of some summers when I would go to my grandmother's house and she had moved from the city, which is where I lived with her when I was up until second grade was over. And then she moved to the quote country with my grandfather, you know, back to where he grew up. And this is Piedmont, Missouri. And I know you're like, oh yeah, Piedmont. No, you're not. You've never heard of Piedmont, Missouri. All right, this is in the quote boot hills, the country gravel road to get to their house. I believe their house, it could look like a cabin, type deal, but it was like built over like a mobile home or something. I don't know. But, you know, bright blue skies, fishing, hanging out in the rivers and the lakes over the summer, and just a different life than what I was exposed to when I was living in the inner city. So that experience in of itself added so many dimensions to who I am and the person that's here with you today, because I bet you wouldn't know, I like me some country music, all right? I was raised on the trips down there, the four-hour drive, Randy Travis, all right? Conway Twitty. You can't forget about Dolly Parton, Reba McIntyre, all right? But you might not know that. And all of those things add different layers and textures to that tapestry or that collage of who I am. And so this is another reason that's important for us to travel because this allows for me in some form or fashion to be able to communicate at some level with different people and those experiences and having that time where I was out of my typical environment and put into a new environment adds again so much to our character. So getting back to my first cut to trip coming up when I was 25 years old on the urging of my then girlfriend, now wife, now wifey, um, to, we went to Miami, you know, it was like we were, we were both, um, just coming, you know, college and all that stuff. And I was just not trying to do that. I didn't see the purpose. Like, why? I'm good where I am, but I wasn't good. I didn't know that there was so much more than my little, my little sphere. And even from there, jumping and let's go outside of our, our country and travel more. Because I don't know if you know this, but U.S. citizens travel the least to other countries, you know, international travel than pretty much all other developed nations. All right, we get into our little, you know, U.S. or or bus situation, we're missing out on so much culture and really expanding our worldview. And so that's something I want to encourage with what you're going to learn today as well. So just within the last couple of weeks, I've been from St. Louis to Jamaica to St. Louis again to New York City to St. Louis again to L.A. to San Diego to San Francisco yeah, it's been, it's been quite a bit, you know, I've been on the move, but at the same time, I've been able to absorb so much culture and so much interaction with people from different places. And it's really been remarkable. And you could probably see, I don't know if you're watching me on YouTube, I got the beard, you know, it's not well groomed right now. You know, as a result of being on the road, I'm gonna keep it for a little bit, because I think this beard is at that, you know, some people might call it a a, a zaddy beard, right? It might be a zad, zaddy. Is that his status beard? I don't know. It's not me saying it. All right. But shout out if uh, you know, if you know what I'm talking about. So just even in the last couple of weeks. So what I want to share with you today is that 
even though this has massive value, which we're going to dive right into, uh, there are some tactics that I've picked up that have enabled me to maintain my health and well-being throughout all of my cloud hopping. All right, now, listen to this. This is why in this episode we're talking about science-based reasons you need to travel more. Listen to this. There was a joint study from the Global Commission on Aging and Transamerica Center for Retirement Studies and it revealed some fascinating data on the potential health benefits of traveling more often. According to the study, women who vacationed at least twice a year had significantly less risk of having a heart attack or dying from heart failure compared to women who rarely vacation and travel. All right. Now, what the men too? What about the men? In the same study, men who did not take an annual vacation were shown to have a 20% higher risk of death from all causes and about a 30% greater risk of death from heart disease. Now, again, when we're talking about health and wellness, this is the model health show. We're talking about all aspects of health and what creates that model, that template for us. You don't hear about travel and vacation when it comes to supporting your health, but this is something we add into that tapestry. We add into that formula for us once we get information like this because it should be pretty eyebrow raising, right? It should be like, what? I never heard of that, you know? And also taking this as an opportunity or an invitation to make some changes. But for me, I'm automatically like, how? How is that possible that we can see results like that from travel? Well, obviously, stress is going to be a huge component. Uh, today, we're seeing over 90% of physician visits being for stress-related illnesses. You know, so this is definitely a big player. We know that it tends to be uh, a stress reliever when we're vacationing and, and traveling and all that good stuff. But also, on a more subtle level, when we're in different environments, we're able to diversify our immune system inputs and our microbiome, right? We've been talking, of course, a lot about the microbiome here on the Model Health Show for several years. And we'll put a couple recent ones that are just absolute masterclasses in talking about the impact of our microbiome and the need to diversify our microbiome for you in the show notes. But that's not what this episode is about, all right? So make sure to pop back and check those out. But that's what travel does as well. Also, our minds. Our minds are able to grow and adapt when we change our environments. This is one of the things that keep us younger and more vital. And it's even a hormetic stressor, right? When we're getting outside of our normal daily routine and we're literally forcing our minds to change and to create new connections, right? And I love this statement from Jim Quick. When your body moves, your brain grooves, all right? So when you're putting your body in different environments, even just right, through typical stuff, exercise movement, but also putting your body in different situations and, and different places, different environments, your brain is creating new grooves and new neural associations. And this is definitely one of those things that can help to keep us younger, longer. Another study that recruited 1,500 women and published in the Wisconsin Medical Journal uncovered that women who took annual vacations were less likely to suffer from depression and other mental health issues. And subsequently, these women on average had better relationships, were less fatigued, and enjoyed a higher quality of life. Wow, really interesting stuff. But speaking of relationships, what about that? Does traveling affect that? A recent U.S. travel survey conducted by Edge Research revealed that couples who frequently travel together report higher levels of satisfaction in their relationship. All right? I can't get no satisfaction. Travel. All right? Travel. So I thought that was super fascinating. But listen to this. Couples who don't travel together in the same, same study Couples who don't travel together are twice as likely to report that their relationship problems don't seem to get resolved. Super fascinating. Why? What is going on there? Is it the change of environment, getting out of that daily, you know, taking the person for granted? Is it that quality time together? These are all components, 
These are all components, shared experiences, all things that add to your intimate relationships. But also, let's expand that in relationships. Other studies indicate that leisure activities with families, such as traveling, can increase a sense of connectedness between family members, including children and their parents. We all know this. We know this, that traveling bonds us together, right? We see this reflected in movies, whether it's The Great Outdoors with John Candy, whether it's The Girl's Trip, Jada Pinkett Smith, and Queen Latifah, or even Frodo with that ring and traveling with his crew. At the end, traveling together, everybody was much closer. Well, hold on, let me make this clear. Unless you've got a golem in your group, all right? It might be your significant other who's playing that golem. It might be a friend who's just always doing the most, all right? You know, that golem is like, everybody here wants to have the friends, but I'm here to f it up. <laughs> So beware of the golems, all right? Outside of the golems, we've got this bonding that takes place, all right? Golem's going to throw himself off the cliff and, you know, melt with the ring or whatever, but that's a totally different uh, situation, all right? If you're not visiting no volcanoes, you don't got to worry about it. But just understanding that this is something to be proactive about with the people that you care about, you know? Uh, travel and experience new things because it's going to circle back and bring more health, more well-being, more connectedness into your life. All right, now, from there, we get into, and this is just some, there's so much data now that we see as, as studies are being compiled, looking at how does travel and getting into diverse cultures affect our health. But some travels are automatically more health supporting, you know, travels to like hike. I never thought of, I don't want to hike. You know, I never thought about that. Why am I going to go somewhere to hike when I got to walk, you know, two miles to my bus stop every day because I had to, all right? I actually had to do that at some point. I know people have those stories of like, you know, I walked seven miles barefoot with, uh, you know, wearing a, a toga to get to school every day, right? It wasn't like that, but I mean, you know, it gets pretty snowy here and I had to, you know, I had to, had to make it happen. But so, some people are traveling for that experience, you know, hiking and, 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 cl and climbing mountains and things like that. And also skiing and exploring exotic locations. You know, you put in a lot of miles when you're in a place like, you know, in France and like going to different museums. And shout out to everybody listening in France. Big love to you guys as well. And we have that aspect. But other travels are a little more complicated when it comes to maintaining your standards of health, right? So maybe like, have have you been on a cruise? Have, have you? <sighs> My goodness, let me tell you. We had the Phenomenal Life Cruise last year and just shout out to everybody who was there. It was phenomenal, all right? Outside of the fact of being on a boat in the middle of the ocean, for me personally, not my fave, all right? You, I can't just get up and be like, you know, I'm gonna go to the store. I can't swim that far. Okay, you, you're, you're kind of trapped. And the food that you, that you got, that's what you got. And we, you know, of course, like you do the best you can. I brought some supplements, brought a little, you know, I had my, my little special little, uh, you know, coffee drinks and things like that. But at the end of the day, you're kind of subject to the environment. And so how do you traverse a situation like that and potentially come out of it healthier? And it was a really cool experience. Like, I never thought about, like, they had this big screen to, like, watch movies out on the deck. It was amazing. Basketball court? I couldn't believe when I saw it. Who? You, you're going to play basketball on a boat? Full court? All right? And, but for me, it was still just, like, the equilibrium thing. You know, I, I did not like the fact that I'm walking down the hallway and people are walking towards me and we're all leaning like we didn't have our V8 today. Right, we're all leaning to the side. Hey, how's it going? You know, it's not normal. All right. And then when you get off the boat finally, like you walking sideways, you know, trying to get your stuff back together. But anyways, certain conditions like that can be a little bit more difficult to navigate. And we all go through this stuff. And I just want to number one encourage you to travel more, but also to give you these top ten health strategies so that you can do this in a more healthful way and life affirming way. And so today I'm gonna to share some of my favorite things that I bring along with me, I literally keep them in my book bag, many of them, and strategies that I employ 
and my top 10 healthy travel tips. So we're going to start with number one, numero uno. Why would we start with number three? Okay. We start with number one, all right? Number one, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Let's just talk about if you're, if you're jumping on a plane, because for a lot of us, that's how we're traveling. All right. If we're, if we're going to another state or another country, we're, we're, the plane, the plane. You remember, I don't know if you've ever seen Fantasy Island. Anybody who has, it'd be like, oh, sh yeah, shine us. So if you're on a plane, listen to this. Just being on a plane and taking that trip to whether it's a layover or your destination, it's one of the ways that immediately gets you dehydrated. Listen to this. This is Here's why. The air you breathe on a plane actually comes from recirculated air and from the outside as well. It's about a 50-50 mix. And it can be a little bit shifted. The pilot can change it a little bit depending on, you know, trying to save fuel and all that stuff. But we don't need to get into that. Okay. But the air at that altitude that you're at has very little moisture. One expert reported that you're flying in an environment where the relative humidity can be as low as 10%, which is more than two times drier than the Sahara Desert. All right. That's dry. Very, very dry. It's just pulling water from your body and your body is going through just every microsecond, so many processes that are happening in a water medium in your body and that needs to get replaced, right? To flush out metabolic waste products and to add fluid for your, everything from your synovial fluid to your, to your brain, to your cerebral spinal fluid, to everything, your blood, you know? Your, your entire body is really operating on a water medium. And so a long flight can reduce your body's set point hydration level by easily like 2%, which you might be like, well, that's not a big deal. Well, if you're not drinking water and hydrating yourself, going through this experience, that level of dehydration can be enough to damage your DNA. And that's not good, right? Your DNA is, again, it's printing out those copies of you depending on, you know, whether what kind of copies are going to get printed. Are there going to be mistakes, it's far more likely when, when you're dehydrated. So some of the results that we can experience on flights, and you might have had this happen, reduced cognition, you know, reduced ability to have executive functions working well, problem solving, uh, social control, decreased attention span, increased irritability. I've seen that before. And also increased feelings of tiredness and fatigue. So a lot of times you might have just, you know, taken a flight and it wasn't like a really stressful day or nothing like that, but you just feel more tired. And once you can really super hydrate your system immediately, you just feel like the energy has just been turned back on in your body. And so that's a big takeaway for this one is to hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. When you're traveling, especially if you're flying, not really especially, every situation matters, but this is something to pay a little bit more special attention to. And, you know, if you haven't listened to this episode, I did a master class on hydration and water that will change your life, all right? And we'll put in the show notes for you if you have happened to miss it. We've had, it's getting close to a million people have checked that episode, that episode out. And it's super important. It's just important stuff because again, we are a water-based being and to find out all the different things that water is responsible for and how to find the very best water. But things have changed for me personally even since then. Because knowing what I know about water, I became a little bit of a water snob, okay? I became a little bit of a jasmine guy on a different world, a little bit of a, a Corella de Ville even, all right? About the water, just because I know, you know, if we're dealing with water bottle in, in plastic and that water is a universal solvent and plastic photodegrades, it's constantly breaking down and water being a solvent, it integrates with those compounds that are being released from that plastic. And it's literally creating like a plastic tea, which one of the big things we see that we have a lot of data about is uh, BPA, right? Bisphenol A, which is a known xenoestrogen that has been found to attach to estrogen receptor sites in the human body and turn on programs that estrogen controls that might not be good, right? All of that. So I, I went on a situation. So here's a, <laughs> many years ago, this is before the the birthing of the model health show when I was, I was doing clinical work I was still working as a strength conditioning coach and you know doing my work as a, as a nutritionist but I was speaking a lot and 
I was invited to speak at a TED event in Las Vegas, right? And my wife, so this was over eight years ago, somewhere around that, she was pregnant with my son, Brayden, okay? And I think she was maybe around five months. And so we went out there. It was a fun time, fun event. And when we were coming back, because at the time, listen, even that long ago, I'm still on the penny pinching side, not really understanding the value of like investing in, in travel and traveling the way that I want to and, and comfortability and all this. So, so I had a little hookup, all right? We got a, a, a family member who is the, the godmother of my son who works for the airline. Okay, and shout out to June. All right, she's also a raw food chef. Shout out to June. And so she got us a standby passes, all right? Now, it sounds all good. Oh, we get to fly, fly for free? Okay, sign me up. No, you are standing by to see if there are seats available. And so it was easy getting there. Like, we literally hopped on flight, and I thought a standby was the greatest thing ever. No. Getting back and going through that Las Vegas airport... First of all, we couldn't get on the first flight, which was troubling in and of itself. And outside of that, they were like, well, you can't get on the plane, sir. Because I was like, you know, I have my joggers on, you know, T-shirt, comfy. I'm, I'm calm. I'm going to be comfy. They're like, no, you have to have on proper attire. And so because you're standby, you're, you're representing the company now, which nobody's going to come around to my seat and be like, hey, you must represent the airline. No, it's just one weird little thing that they had and they were just giving me a hard time about. So I need to have on some dress pants or khakis or something like that, collared shirt, just to get on the plane. I don't have that stuff with me, okay? First of all, it's not my vibe, all right? So in order to get to this next flight that was leaving in like 30 minutes, I had to find some clothes somewhere in the airport. And so I remember we walked past a PGA store and so this airport was huge. You got to take like two shuttles, okay? Like the airport trams or whatever. So I got on there, got over, you know, she was waiting for me because so for whatever reason, she had on some maternity um, khaki pants, which she never wears. She's never worn since, all right? My wife has never worn any khaki anything, but she just happened to have them on, so she was all good. So I jumped on, went to the PGA store, got me the khakis, the, the collar shirt, and, you know, I threw this stuff on, and I, I just felt like I just wanted to punch myself in the jugular. Like, the way that I looked, I didn't like it. I didn't like me when I saw myself, right? But I got back, I was like, okay, yeah, 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 I got, I'm dressed like you want, can I? And so they're like, cool, you're, you're clear to, to get on the next flight. Next flight was full. And we ended up spending the night in another city because the, there was a plane that took us to another city, and then we spend the night there and then we can go home in the morning. And so that was not fun. But while through all this whole process, because they didn't have the quality water that I wanted, I didn't drink. Okay. Even when we got to that hotel that we stayed overnight, I didn't drink. You know, we weren't by any kind of, you know, stores or anything like that. And so I was just going to just not drink and be dehydrated. What is that going to do? That is going to break my body down. That is a situation where... It's just silly to be neurotic like that. Drink some water that's in a plastic bottle. It's better than nothing. And here's the great thing about your body. Your body will preferentially choose the higher quality stuff, especially when it comes to water. It will displace water that is old and used and even lower, lower tier and replace it with the new stuff. That's what it'll do. And so don't be like me, the old me, and be super neurotic about it. We do need to be educated about water and make the best choices where we can. But the most important thing is to drink some clean water, even if it is coming in not the best form that you want. All right, so I want to share that story with you that we all make mistakes, we all grow, and we all learn from stuff because I cannot believe that I did that to myself. And I felt terrible. I felt terrible. You know, already going through this situation, dressed like I was dressed. And then, you know, being dehydrated like that, it's just silly. Just absolutely silly. So, number one, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Keep that bottle with you. Even here, I'm collect. I got this bottle from Jamaica. You see this? If you can see the video, this looks like designed by Usain Bolt right here.
Got my stainless steel bottle. Keep the bottle with you because you're far more likely to drink water. Let me get a sip right here live. This is happening. It's commercial right there. Um, it's far more likely that you're going to drink when you have the bottle with you. All right. Moving on. Let's get back to our list here. We've got our top 10 healthy travel tips. Be proactive with that hydration. It is number one. It's number one for a reason. Let's move on to number two. Now, number two is going to be prefaced. And I'm going to share a study with you from my book, Sleep Smarter, which I have here. And I'm going to crack this open as the teachers of old, when they would have us gather around to hear a treatise and share this with you directly from the book. So listen to this. A study on what happens to your intestinal flora due to irregular sleep patterns was published in the journal Cell. Researchers discovered that your circadian timing system influences your bacteria balance. Common experiences like jet lag were enough to create bacterial dysbiosis in the gut, which in turn leads to metabolic disorders. In the study, researchers analyzed fecal samples from people before, during, and after bouts of jet lag from a 10-hour flight, spanning multiple time zones. They found that the jet-lagged participants showed an increase in a type of bacteria known to be more prevalent in people with obesity and diabetes. Then the levels of these microbes dropped back to normal once the travelers got back on a regular sleep cycle. It's been found that your gut bacteria also have a circadian timing system and there's a virtual, quote, changing of the guard, end quote, that happens every night to help keep the good guys in control of your vessel. If you don't sleep or don't sleep well, then it gives the opportunistic bacteria a chance to take over your gut and thus your brain. So that's from Sleep Smarter. That is chapter seven. And this study is super fascinating, showing that our microbiome changes just from irregular sleep patterns and changing time zones from something like a, a long flight, right? Our bacteria, which we know today, we've talked about this many times on the show, our microbiome has a huge influence on our health. And literally we're seeing that the microbiome cascade that we see in folks who are battling with diabetes, for example, are, even if you're a healthy individual, will shift and become more like that and start uh, the expression of certain genes from those specific bacteria that are becoming more in power. And it can be a slippery slope. So we wanna make sure that we're supporting our gastrointestinal health, specifically when we're traveling is super important. So folks that tend to get sick and things like that, a big part of it is the gastrointestinal tract having this kind of weird dysregulation. So we'll talk a little bit more about sleep and that component in a moment, but I wanna talk about fiber, okay, fiber. All right, fiber, super important for us to focus on when we're traveling, making sure we're getting plenty of these various fibers. And according to a recent guest that we had on the show, Dr. Alan Christensen, there's like over a dozen different types of plant fibers that we need for uh, our, our diversity of our microbiome. And many of them we're missing out on, but bottom line is we need to make sure that we're proactively seeking out these fibers to make sure that we're keeping our gastrointestinal tract nice and happy, specifically the good probi probiotic friendly flora need resistant starches, all right? Resistant starches. So this can come in the form of a supplement. And so I'll even take a prebiotic supplement when I'm traveling, but also we'll see, you know, adding in foods like Jerusalem artichoke, raw onions and garlic, and the various plant fibers we might find in, you know, just green vegetables and things of that nature. And even as Dr. Alan Christensen mentioned, green bananas is a great source of resistant starch. So there's many different types, you know, beans and that are prepared properly if possible, we need to make sure we're proactively getting this in, support that microbiome shift as we're traveling. And also, of course, the hydration aspect helps here too, because without that hydration, those plant fibers are not going to be moving and sweeping through and doing their jobs, feeding the friendly flora and allowing them to create you know, things like these short chain fatty acids that help to protect your gut and also help to even protect your brain. 
And so this is something that I want to put on the list and to be proactive and conscious about when we're traveling. Right? This is a huge tip is making sure that we're getting plenty of fiber when we travel. Number three on our list and something that I keep in my backpack, right? Dora the Explorer has her backpack. I have mine, okay? I don't have map. I don't have the map because, you know, Dora didn't have an iPhone, but I do have my, you know, my superhero equipment. You know what I'm saying? So I have, for me, I travel with enzymes. So number three on the list is to take some enzymes, all right, digestive enzymes. Now, the reason I say this, and specifically when I travel, is that you might have a tendency to experiment, try new foods, eat things that you nor normally wouldn't eat. Let's give your digestion a little bit of assistance because, for example, if you know, you're trying a cuisine that is the, the cultural thing where you are and you want to experience the culture, but it has some dairy in it. And for you, if you have you know, even like a bite of dairy, everybody has to clear the room, all right? Because it's smelling like rotten eggs and childhood trauma up in there, you know? So you got to be mindful of that. If you got issues with dairy, what can you do? Lactase enzyme can help you to digest that, um, the lactose that you find in dairy that tends to cause people the most problems. And also amylase and glucoamylase can help you to better digest grains, for example. So again, you might have your protocol that you're doing when you can manage your environment, but when you travel, things can be different. And so those are just a couple of the enzymes that are found in a product that I really love, which is Digest Tech from Onnit. The reason I love them is they also, not just the digestive enzymes that help to digest your food and break down those food particles, but also it helps to fortify and boost your digestive fire because of having things like pepsin and ginger in their capsules as well. And it's super easy to travel with because they are capsules. Definitely check it out. You can add this to your travel superhero utility belt. It's onnit.com forward slash model. That's O-N-N-I-T.com forward slash model. And just go to the supplements category. It's right there. All right. Digest tech. Definitely one of my travel essentials. So that is number three on our list. Take some enzymes, especially if you're eating some questionable food. You don't know how your body's going to react. It can really be helpful and stave off some problems. All right. Number four on our list is staying in the same lane as the things we've talked about to take care and protect and fortify your microbiome, which is number four is to get some friendly ferments. All right. One of the first things that I do, you know, when I hop off the plane, if at all possible, you know, I'll go to a Whole Foods or a health food store or something like that. If I have the opportunity, you know, whichever city I might be in, and I get myself a fermented food or fermented beverage, just to take back with me to, you know, it might be the Airbnb or to the hotel, wherever it might be. And super easy for the beverages today. There's so many. You know, when I started doing this and started traveling heavily, kombucha was hot. But that's pretty much the only option we had in typical yogurt. But now they've got, you know, if you don't do well with the, with the dairy, which for a lot of people that can't really digest dairy well, yogurt isn't a problem because a lot of that uh, milk sugar has been kind of consumed and digested by the bacteria. But not saying for you to, if, if you're not doing the dairy thing, that's all good. You know, they have different ones which are based on coconut yogurt and things of that nature. So different options to choose from. We've got kefirs. We've got, obviously, the fermented veggies, sauerkraut, kimchi, pickles, all right? Pickles are also a fermented food as well, you know, but you want to get the good stuff if, all, if at all possible. And so literally, like, I'll, you know, get a jar of sauerkraut, and the next day with breakfast, I'll have a serving of that. You know, I might even order food from the hotel. It might be room service, but I got my addition to it to make sure I'm getting that, that friendly, friendly flora for my, digest my digestion and to help support my microbiome in its change from being in a different location, all right? So number four on the list is very simple, very specific, but are you doing it? Get yourself some friendly ferments when you are traveling. All right, number five on our list, and this one is super important because this is a game changer when we're traveling. Number five is to set up your sleep sanctuary. Right, set up your sleep sanctuary. I wrote a book on sleep wellness. It's called Sleep Smarter, which I hope that you have a copy. Audiobook, ebook, the 
a physical book, whatever it might be, if you don't have Sleep Smarter, this is like an essential part of your library. So make sure to check it out if you haven't already. You can get it anywhere books are sold, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all that good stuff, all right? But make sure to check it out. Audible, shout out to Audible. But here's the thing. Traveling and not being in your controllable environment, it can be, it can definitely be a curveball. So proactively in me having these experiences, you know, I might go to, uh, you know, uh, a place where I'm staying and it's just like major lights outside and they're just shining through the little crappy blinds that they might have. So what do you do, right? So set up your sleep sanctuary, be proactive, knowing that, hey, I just want to be prepared. And so here's one of the things that I do when I travel. I actually bring some uh, construction tape with me, all right? So this is like that you use for if somebody's painting, right? To like guard the the edges and like, you know, to tape uh, plastic to the carpet and things like that. So I'll take tape in my in my bag and I'll put tape covering over these sources of, quote, light pollution that might be in my room. So what does that look like? Well, one time... I stayed at a hotel and, you know, they got the uh, fire alarm and that's cool. I want, that's good. Have that. The light was so big. It illuminated my room. Like I was getting beamed up into a spaceship all night. It was crazy. So little piece of tape, covered the light, little teeny little piece. Problem solved. All right. Same thing. It could be, you know, the, the light from the television monitor when, you know, when it's off this beaming light or whatever the case might be, let's bring a little bit of tape. And another situation that might happen, and this is, this might be that super neurotic thing that, you know, 10 years from now we're talking about, I'm like, well, you know, back in the day I did this, but I do this now. And I just did it for my son. We stayed at an Airbnb in LA and his door to his room led directly outside. And the door was like a cloudy glass door. And so all night he had the light just shining into his room from outside, you know, street light. And I didn't know. He told me the next day. And so we grabbed some aluminum foil and just put it up over the, the door, put it up over the glass. You know, we use the tape that I travel with, put up over the glass and blacked his room out. Now, for some of us might be like, well, that is a little bit much. Listen, Cornell University did a study and they took the test subject and put them into an otherwise dark room. And they shined a light just the size of a quarter a fiber optic cable behind their knee, and that was enough to disrupt their sleep cycle, All right? Light pollution is, is a real thing we're going to be talking more and more about because that light is beaming on you all night. It's unnatural light. It's artificial light. It's throwing off your body's circadian rhythm, and it's definitely going to affect how well-rested you are and enabling your body to go through its normal sleep cycles, All right? So it's not just some crazy thing, and it's just a simple, simple fix. Aluminum foil, boom, tape that up, we're done, you know? So it might be a window, it might be a full door like it was in my son's case, and it took us all of three minutes to, to do that, and he slept so much better the next night. All right, so having those little tools in your superhero utility belt also, you know, maybe it's, uh, you know, I roll up a towel you know, under the door, especially if you're staying at a hotel, that light can just be beam into your room. Roll up a towel, put it right there, all right? You know, some people do that because they're, you know, smoking on the, uh -huh, you know, they might be doing some stuff, we do it for better sleep, okay? All right, so that's number five. Set up your sleep sanctuary, and this can include your typical sleep routine factors, you know, having your good book or your podcast, uh, your magnesium, whatever it might be. Set up your, your environment so that it can help you to, to naturally transition into great sleep, right? Be supportive of that. And so I even look for that stuff, you know, with different hotels or Airbnb, you know, what, what is it, what's, the, what's that curtain situation looking like, all right? I'm not super neurotic about it, but if I can, you know, I even take the towel if I need to, if there's light coming in from the top of the curtain, just roll up a towel, stick it up there, right? Get my room as dark as I can, all right? So that's number five on our list is to set up your sleep sanctuary because supporting your sleep wellness, as we talked about with that study, is going to support your microbiome. It's going to support your energy levels, protecting your immune system, all right, so one of the biggest issues with our immune system getting hit is due to sleep deprivation. All right, so number six on our list stays supportive of number five and supporting our sleep wellness. And this is bringing along something 
on the nutrition side to support your sleep. And so for me, especially when I'm changing time zones, I want to help to get my body adapted to the new time zone as swiftly and gracefully as possible. And for that, I'm a big fan of situational, occasional melatonin supplementation. Now, in my book, Sleep Smarter, so I'm going to refer back to that. This is something you got to be careful with when we're talking about melatonin. It can be really, really helpful or it can be a problem. So listen to this. There was a study published in the Journal of Biological Rhythms that discovered that faulty timing or large doses of melatonin can cause desensitization of melatonin receptors. Essentially, you can start shutting down your body's ability to even use melatonin at all. Not good. Not good. Melatonin isn't just about regulating sleep. It's regulating your entire biological clock. It's also a very powerful anti-cancer hormone, and it's also involved in fat oxidation, so literally burning fat. And the list goes on and on. It's not just one thing, but it's super important for your sleep quality. And if we're haphazardly taking melatonin all the time, that's not, it's not okay. And also if it's in larger amounts. Small microdosing consistently, okay. But I much rather use this in spot situations. So for me, changing time zones, I have my sprayable melatonin from on it, which is, you know, they're using earth-grown nutrients and sources for making all of their supplements. So that's why I really love them. It's super easy to travel with as well. And plus by being it's uh, sprayable and in that liquid form, it's much easier to absorb, especially if it's sublingually under your tongue. You know, you've got receptors there that can just kind of get into your system a little bit faster. So melatonin and or something else, you know, so it might not be melatonin for me all the time. It might be bringing along some reishi tea or it might be, uh, you know, some magnesium, you know, uh, I, try, I travel with that topical magnesium and, or it might be use an oral supplement of magnesium, but something to help my body to get adjusted to the travel. All right. So I highly encourage you to do the same thing. These little things can really help for you to stay healthy and to enjoy your experience a little bit more by doing something really small and simple, like doing a little supplementation to support your sleep. Number seven on our list, listen to this. Number seven is poop like a boss. All right, poop like a boss. I know you wasn't expecting that, but this is one of the top 10 here. And this goes back to supporting the, the digestive system and, and our overall you know, microbiome and our overall digestive wellness. When we travel, a lot of folks get constipated, right? Because, you know, it's called being regular, but that pattern, that cycle can get thrown off a little bit. So doing our thing with the, uh, the increased fiber, the hydration, uh, getting those ferments, those are all going to help. But we also want to make sure that we're getting ourselves in the right position, okay? Did an entire episode dedicated to this and talking about the squatty potty. All right. And so I've got squatty potties in all the rooms in my house. I've given it as gifts, probably more than any other gift that I've given because of the crazy science behind it. You know, and just this the, the puborectalis muscle and just not being in a in a squatting position when we go to the bathroom, when we do the the do so. The number two, it does not allow for complete elimination. And we see improved bowel function, reduced rates of diseases of issues with, you know, diverticulosis and things like that when people are able to get in the right position. So this is just putting your feet up. You, it's, you know, you just slide it in and out on a normal uh, standard toilet and it puts you in that proper position. But what about when you travel? Well, we have a porta squatty. So it's a travel version of the squatty potty. And man, I love it so much. It's super easy. Like literally I have two of them and I keep one in my suitcase because I don't want to forget it again. Once it was a while back, but I forgot it. And then next thing you know, you're, you're trying to figure out what to do. You're making a makeshift because you're so used to that. And it's just better. So you're like flipping over little trash cans and stuff and trying to get, it's just not the same. It's not fun. So I keep it in my suitcase when I unpack. And there's another one my son keeps as well. Because literally when we get there to the hotel, the Airbnb, you know, somebody got to use the bathroom. So my son, he's just like, uh, do you have the squatty body? Nobody wants to go without it now. The little guy or my older son either. Or my wife. You know, none of us want to go drop the kids off at the pool without the squatty potty. All right. So highly, highly encourage you to get yourself a porta squatty. For me, from my experience, travel 
essential. Travel essential. You can check that out at squattypotty.com forward slash model. I do get a discount for my audience over there. So it's S-Q-U-A-T-T-Y-P-O-T-T-Y.com forward slash model. Get yourself a Squatty Potty like yesterday. If you don't have a Squatty Potty, listen to the episode. It'll just blow your mind. Okay, it'll blow your mind. So squattypotty.com forward slash model and... The Porta Squatty, when you travel, super good idea. It's a newer release. Squatty Potty, like, you know, they were on Shark Tank and just the company just blew up. Maybe that's not a good analogy. Never mind. Never mind. The company did really, really well. It's helping people feel better and have better digestive health all over the world. All right, so let's move on. So that's number seven. Moving on to number eight. Number eight is to specifically Fortify your immune system with nutritional insurance. Did you know that when you're flying, when you're in an aircraft, one of the most significant things that our body is is exposed to is actually radiation. So we're talking like cosmic radiation from outside our atmosphere. We're getting closer and getting exposed to that. And to kind of put this in context, this is because at high altitudes, the air actually gets thinner. And the further you go from the Earth's surface, the fewer molecules of gas there are per volume of space. And this thinner air with fewer molecules is now unable to deflect as many of these incoming cosmic rays, which is this radiation from outer space. And so without this atmospheric shielding and just having less of it, there is a lot more exposure to radiation. It's just automatic. And so researchers at the University of California, San Francisco, published a study in the Journal of the American Medical Association Dermatology, finding that pilots flying for just one hour at 3,000 feet altitude receive the same amount of UV radiation through the cockpit window as they would from 20 minutes in a very strong tanning bed, all right? That radiation is just hitting you up. And radiation, here's the issue, is that, number one, it can damage your DNA, suppresses your immune system, And also, it can even damage your telomeres. And your telomeres are the end caps on your chromosomes. It's the greatest biological marker we have for how long you're going to live. It can shorten those bad boys. In fact, a 2015 study published in Frontiers in Oncology found that radiation directly impacts and causes dysfunction in our telomere function. All right? So we have to be mindful of this. We have to be mindful of this. Again, we don't need to be neurotic because we're going to be flying. We're, we're just seeing the beginnings of what we're going to do as far as aviation and, you know, and travel and things like that. It's just becoming more and more and more. But what can we do to give our bodies uh, a little bit of extra insurance and defense? Well, listen to this. There was a scientific review published in the Journal of Applied Psychology on the benefits of spirulina. And it states that many studies suggest several therapeutic effects of spirulina, ranging from reduction of cholesterol and cancer to enhancing the immune system, increasing intestinal lactobacilli, reducing toxicity by heavy metals, and radiation protection. It's one of those foods that has these remarkable capacities to protect us in different ways. So spirulina is one of my favorite things ever. It's 70% protein by weight and is super rich in B vitamins and natural source of iodine, which is great for supporting your thyroid health and also phycocyanin. This very rare compound that's only seen in a few foods, phycocyanin, that's been found in studies to promote stem cell genesis, which is literally the creation of new stem cells. So that's one aspect of it. Also the chlorophyll content in there. That's why it's such a deep green color is that it, Chlorophyll appears to be one of the most effective nutritional means to protect your body from radiation in and of itself. It's kind of like how plants are dealing, green plants are dealing with the radiation themselves. It's like this medicine or this kind of an antidote in a sense in dealing with radiation. So that's one component that we have in Organifi's green juice is spirulina is one of the aspects of the formula that they have. Also in there is chlorella which is the highest chlorophyll source food that we know about, that's in there as well. And it tastes good. So another thing that I travel with that I keep in my bag at all times are the Organifi Green Juice Go Packs. 
And the reason that I use Organifi green juice formula versus there's a lot of different green juice blends on the market or green superfood kind of concentrates, but they do a low temperature processing. So we actually retain a lot of the nutrients in there and the formula tastes good. So if we're on the plane, I could hand one to my son, open it up, he could pour it into his bottle and he's all good. He's like, I don't know. I don't want to have this. It's green. It's gross. It, it actually tastes really good. You know, it has this really great, uh, it, it just makes you feel clean as well. You know, it's just really, really awesome product. And I highly recommend checking that out for your travels. Throw some Organifi Go Packs as that nutritional insurance into your bag, whether you're flying or not. You're going to get your nutritional basis covered as a supplement because, of course, we want to continue to eat real food. But this is where things like this come into play, all right, because it's far better than these synthetic so-called multivitamins that aren't even real food sources of the nutrients we think we're getting, right? Food has it, but also it has the array and the, the, the bio constituents, you know, the cofactors that help your body to use and absorb it better because it's from real food. All right, so that's Organifi.com forward slash model for 20% off their green juice formula. It's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash model. You get 20% off. So definitely check that out. All right, we're at number nine on our list of the top 10 healthy travel tips. And number nine is to proactively search, seek out healthy restaurants in your area. All right. Prior to having all this information on our phones, we would go to like, you know, go to Google and try to map out. We're using MapQuest. Do you remember MapQuest? You printed out what? Well, but even before MapQuest, do you remember maps? Come on now. Now we've got it all on our phone. Such a gift. You can literally put in the keywords, you know, if you've got maps on your iPhone, for example, um, healthy restaurants, you know, or, you know, of course you can go to Google, uh, healthy restaurants near me, right? Or you can put in the keywords like organic, farm to table, grass fed, vegetarian, whatever it is that you're looking for. And it can give you uh, immediately a list of different options that you could check out. All right, so be proactive at that. You don't have to be at the mercy of, you know, I'm at this place and I don't know what to eat. So, you know, just whatever. We'll see what happens. Just use your phone. Simple search. So that's what we do. We literally, if the kids are wanting to do some burgers, we want to get the best quality that there is, you know. So you could type in if it's vegetarian burgers or grass-fed burgers, and you're going to get a list from, you know, a lot of different places in the U.S. and also Different places outside the U.S. now are kind of catering to that because we've changed the game, you know. You and me and, and the rest of us who are really being proactive and making decisions about the quality of food that we're eating are forcing change in how stuff is done in our culture, and I'm super proud of that. And so just doing a simple search. And also in this process, even if you don't have access to the very best food, make sure you get your two servings in. I've talked about this many times this is incredibly important in maintaining our health if we're looking at the digestive support side, but also Chicago's Rush University Medical Center found that people who eat just two servings of green leafy vegetables each day experience fewer memory problems and cognitive decline compared to people who rarely eat green vegetables. And they found on average folks who eat two servings a day of green vegetables have brains that are roughly 11 years younger simply by doing that one health practice. And so whether it's lunch or, you know, even for my breakfast when I'm traveling, if it's a hotel and I'm just ordering up, a lot of times, you know, you can get a cage-free omelet if you, if you want. It's pretty standard out there now. But I'll say, hey, I'd like to get a side of sautéed spinach. And because right there, if it's on the ingredients of what can be added to an omelet, they've got the spinach. And just ask. And, you know, with spinach, for example, it'd be, when we talk about getting two servings, an entire jumbo box of spinach. Have you ever cooked spinach? You take all this spinach and you cook it, this huge box, and it ends up being like a teaspoon of spinach, right? It's a little baby spoon. All that spinach is going to turn into a little baby spoon, all right? It's super easy to get those two servings in is what I'm trying to say. All right, so number nine on our healthy travel tips, search for restaurants in your area. You could do this before or during the trip, you know, once you get there, and make sure that you are, are looking for restaurants that have your standards and make sure you're getting your two servings of green leafy vegetables in each day, no matter what. That's your one target. Everything else, 
do you. Just do that one thing for me. Get those two servings in. All right. Number 10 on our list, and this one is super important as well. Number 10 is to get your body organized. Get your body organized, specifically after long car rides and especially flights. So what do I mean by this? Being on a flight can really throw off your body's mechanics. Typically, we see a back position where we're not in a natural position for our spine. And we can be sitting in the standard seats on a flight and it can you can lose your L curve, right? The the lumbar curve of your lower back, right? That's going to get lost when you're sitting on the typical um, airplane seats. And also we can see the propensity, and that's called flat back syndrome, by the way, flat back syndrome. They couldn't come up with a better name, but that's what it is. And we also see kyphosis, right? When you sit in those chairs, your shoulders start to lean forward and you got the flat back. I'm just looking like a mess right now, okay? I'm looking, if you can see the camera, I'm looking like Quasimodo. All right. (sighs) Right. Like I'm flexing, but never mind. So be aware of this, right? This kyphosis and also flat back syndrome with this can lead to your, your glute muscles literally turning off and increasing the risk of low back problems. So what do we do on the flight itself? I found a couple of hacks. One of them is supporting that L curve by just rolling up. Maybe it's a blanket. Or maybe it's if you can, it, some flights might have a pillow or even taking a jacket, just roll it up and stick it right there behind your lower back, right? And then you sit back, sit nice and tall, and then tighten that seat belt, all right? And that's a great use of the seat belt because why do we have them, all right? If something actually, they, there's, you know, it can be pretty neurotic about having a seat belt buckled. Like, if something happens, what's the seat belt going to do, you know? But... I, I get it. I get it. And no disrespect to any flight attendants who are listening right now. My son's godmother, June, is flight attendant. She's like, better buckle that seatbelt and shut up. But for me, it's just like, this is a good use of it, is making sure that I'm supporting the L curve in my spine, right? So that's one little aspect. Another little strategy is simply getting up, right? You don't have to sit for a whole three-hour flight. You know, there's an opportunity to just get up, go to the bathroom, Uh, you know, just stand up, maybe keep your snacks in your bag. So you got to stand up just to get them out, set things up so that you can get up a couple, three times throughout the flight and just allow your body to kind of decompress in your, in your, and you can straighten yourself out a little bit. All right. So that's a couple of things on the flight, but it's really about getting your body reorganized once you get off the flight, whether this is at the airport or at your final destination, But you want to make sure that you stretch your hip flexors because your hip flexors are going to get shortened by sitting all that time, whether you're in a flight or in a car, and also your neck because you're going to have a tendency to just have this straightforward position the majority of the time. And I've seen this many times where folks get little neck issues from travel, your neck, and also just moving your joints around, period, and getting some blood flow and circulation and lubrication to your various joints. So... I'm somebody like I prefer to actually do a little quick, you know, two to three minute mobility when I get off the flight. All right. I'm not trying to be that guy. All right. He's like, what is he? Is he doing yoga at the air? I'm not that guy. But I find a little side spot, you know, stretch my hip flexors, which is just basically, you know, you get down on one knee, you putting your 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 knees and your angles of your legs at both are kind of at 90 degree positions and then you're just pushing your hips forward. So I'll do that and maybe do a couple of things, you know, just to kind of move my lower back around, little side bends, twisting, that kind of stuff. But just taking a couple of minutes to let my body get back reorganized and to get fresh. And then you could do a proper session once you get to your Airbnb, your hotel, your friend's family house, whatever the case might be. But These are the 10 things we need to do. It can stave off a lot of problems and make sure that we're healthy through the process, but also being able to carry that health back when we get back home so we can just hit the ground running and get back into our normal routine. So I hope that you got a lot of value out of this and it's inspired you to travel more and also to just be proactive at employing a little bit more intentional strategy to take care of yourself and also the people that you care about. All right. So 
This is something to add to your overall health strategy because travel is one of those things that impacts our health on all levels, who we are mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, it impacts all of it. Because as I talked about at the beginning of the show, travel is something that adds to our character, expands our worldview, and it also has some surprising health benefits. Hope you got a lot of benefit out of this episode. Share it out with your friends and family. Definitely share it out with the person in your life that loves to travel or especially, especially the people in your life who don't travel. All right, share it out on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. And of course, you could tag me. I'm at Sean Model. And I appreciate you immensely. We've got some powerful episodes and show topics coming your way soon. So make sure to stay ready. All right, take care. Have an amazing day. And I'll talk with you soon. Thank you.